Hello everyone and welcome back to Model Hobbies. So as you can see today we will be building the Eduard Tempest Mark V Series 1. This is a very nice model, um, just show you the parts. They all look pretty nice, uh, a lot of detail on them. Parts are uh, formed quite well, no like overspill from the plastic or anything like that. Like I say, nice bit of detail, that's the inside of the cockpit and part of the wings and stuff like that. Um, the panel lining and the riveting is really nice on the outside. So a lot of detail, all the little screws and stuff like that that are in the wings. Two different types of propeller, not sure why. Doesn't actually say any instructions about the other propeller, but if anyone knows, let me know. Petrol fuselage again, the riveting and the panel lining is quite nice. The only thing I found about this panel lining was it was not as deep as on the wings. The back part of it was, but the front part of it wasn't. This is the photo work stuff that you get with it. Um, I had a lot of trouble with this, especially the pedals inside the cockpit, which I ended up not using. I just used the plastic ones that came with the kit. The decals, um, these ones are easy to put on. There was another set of decals that come with some tiny, tiny little bits that it's just impossible to put them on. I ended up not doing it because it's just forever. Uh, that was a glass parts, and that's the mask in there for the canopy. So we'll start with a build. This is obviously starting with the inside of the cockpit. Make sure sand down all the little bits where it's attached to the sprue. Make it nice and flat. If you can see that, that is. This model went together quite nicely. Um, I used Tamiya's extra thin glue sticking the parts together on most of it. Uh, otherwise I use Revel Precision Glue, the blue bottle stuff that you get. But the Tamiya extra thin was nice because it manages to get inside the little gaps and sets in there quite nicely. This is all just the inside of the cockpit, the chair, stuff like that. Like I say, all the detail of the plane was really nice. Just all the cockpit, uh, the cockpit bits that were put together here. I sprayed it with um, Tamiya's cockpit colour, uh, cockpit green. I think it was after a dark green, but the equivalent to that was Tamiya's uh, cockpit green, which is what I used. And that's obviously Tamiya's flat black that I just go over all the black bits with. It's, that's like the. Um, the stick there, the chair had some black on it in different parts, so that's just Tamiya's flat black. Again, just using cockpit green because this is all the inside. That was the part that the pedals gone on, that uh, the pedals went on, sorry. Um, you get photo etch parts, which I just found incredibly hard to put on. Um, and like I said, I end up using the actual stock parts that you get with the plane itself. As in like the plastic parts, not the photo etch parts. But these are the photo etch seat belts, which I thought looked quite nice. As you can see, the pedals there are the ones I use, which they came out all right in the end. The silver was um, Revel's metal, gun metal. That is photo etched uh, parts for the cockpit. I'm sorry about the camera angle. I'm trying to look at the part and stick it on at the same time. Uh, but they were really nice. The detail on that was really nice. And you do get some little panel parts that go on the left and right as well. Again, cockpit green, just spraying that. 
I ended up putting too much in my airbrush and I couldn't pour it out for some reason. I can't remember why, but I ended up just spraying the hole in the inside of it green, so. I think I was having a bit of trouble with my airbrush on this plane. That's why this film's taking me quite a while to get out. My generator ended up blowing up. Sorry, not my generator. My air compressor, sorry, ended up blowing up. I had to fix that. Um, yeah, a lot of trouble. Airbrush blocked up over and over. But we got there in the end. These are all the engine parts that go at the bottom of the engine, like the in air intake valve at the front of the plane. You get a bit of detail that goes on the inside of the plane. I sprayed it all up and then realised it's going on the inside and you're never ever going to see it. So, But I know it's in there, like I said before, on other models. That's the air intake on the front, which isn't exactly the same as what it should be. Um, on the real plane, I think it sticks out a bit and you can buy from a third party a part that, that makes it look real or you can 3D print it. The actual real looking version of it but that yeah it just it's just a round hole basically which I was a bit disappointed with because it you know you'd thought it'd be exact but it wasn't <clears throat> yeah this is a part that goes on the inside of the plane that you're never gonna see so That was the pain to get that on. It kept falling off every time I tried to put it on. But all in all, the plane went together quite nicely, really. It did slot together quite a lot, uh, quite well, and didn't have a lot of trouble with it. Like that, that slotted on nicely. It all went together pretty much like that. Just taking off, again, the parts where it was attached to the sprue. Using my hobby knife to do that. And then I gave it a bit of a sand down afterwards as well. Sometimes I find when I use a hobby knife to do this, I take a bit too much off. And excuse my dodgy top that I've got on, it's my hoodie that my wife got me for Christmas. <laughs> because I sanded down the little parts that um, where the sprue was attached, I just went back over the panel lines with a a little knife, just to indent them again. Get them from any hobby shop, they're quite good. You can use them as a saw as well, to saw little plastic bits off if you need to. The towel didn't go together nicely, um, it stuck out a bit, so I ended up sanding a bit off the back of the towel. Right on the inside, where that little triangle bit meets by my thumbs. It wasn't quite flush and it didn't look right to me, so I sanded it down a bit. I think it was a bit too thick, so I thinned it down a bit just so it would go together nicely. Putting the air intake valve in. Sorry, the air intake, not the air intake valve. Cut that bit. Putting the air intake in. Again, that little bit of the front should be sticking out in seat on the inside of the intake. That's the cockpit, obviously. The cockpit came out really nice in the end. I did do a little short of it, so if you want to have a look at that, you can see the inside of the cockpit nicely. <laughs> All the little photo etch parts and that in there. I put the back wheel. Um, part in like where the gear goes up into. But yeah there's the inside of it. It looked, came out quite nice. Got little gear sticks and levers and stuff like that in there. This is the other side just making sure I paint out all the instruments on the inside using a flat black from Tamiya again. Together. It went together quite nicely. Um, it did need a small bit of fill up, which I do and sand down. The filler I used was Revel um, model filler. So yeah, I filled it, glued it, and I'm just giving it a slight sand down. Didn't need too much filler. But 
because I've sanded it down, uh, the rivets and that will need redoing, so I'll redo the rivets. With this, that's a Revel rivet maker, or whatever you want to call it, from Revel. Using the Revel Precision Glue on this because I find it binds a bit stronger for the bigger parts. Uh, this, this is the wings, the actual, like, um, where the gear goes up into and the guns are held. The glue is actually called Revel Contactor Glue, I think. But it does dry nice and quick as well, so when you put the parts in, it does tend to dry quite nicely and hold to the parts there. You really got to have some patience doing this. Um, it's very hard trying to get these little parts in, trying to get them into the right place without dropping them on the floor and, and never finding them again. Just going over it again with a cockpit green, which is what it was again, it wanted dark green, but this is the equivalent to it. I had a bit of trouble trying to get the wings in, and I still don't think they fit in properly. I don't know if it's the cockpit is too low down or something like that, but um, the back end of the wings didn't want to go into the plane properly, which you'll see later on. Again, using the Revel contactor glue because I do find it holds bigger parts a lot better. So yeah, I put the wings on. I uh, just put in the back wings on and the flaps and stuff like that and the ailerons. Um, you've got to make sure you get them nice and straight. Okay, hold in there for a little while, and so they hold. I did let that dry, and then I came and done these bits. This is the part that goes around the cockpit. Just spraying it with flat black. gun sight and that going which it had two little glass well it had three glass parts the gun sight and two little glass parts on the edges if you can see and one of them dropped on the floor and it took me probably about two hours to find it but I was determined because I wanted it on there so that fit really nice I was really happy with that um, I pushed in nicely made a nice clicking sound when I did it just putting the flaps and that on now they didn't go in great, so they needed a bit of persuasion getting them in. So if you ever build this, you might want to maybe sand down one edge just slightly, just to help get it in. So you've got to use a little bit of force to try and get that in. The guns, the cannons down on the front. This model, I must admit, it did click together really well. Tail wheel. I did glue it, it doesn't spin. I'll tell you another good thing if you're ever starting out modeling, there's a good pair of tweezers because they really do help you can get pre like precision pointy tweezers or you can get the flattened end ones which I've got there and I've got the other one as well so they do help this is the wheels I made them a bit too shiny I think so. and I like them because they actually have Dunlop and that written around the outside of the wheel which 
is quite a nice little touch. Must learn to put this in the middle of the camera more. Just the gears and all that going on now. I know there's um, just been an airfix tempest come out as well. I think it's a 172. This is a 148 this plane, so I might be wrong. It might be a 148 airfix, but if anyone's built that, let me know. Is it similar to this, or does it look better? The bit that I always snap off, um, the little aerial that sticks out the bottom, without fail, every time I build a plane, I knock that off. And the aerial on the top as well, that gets knocked off. You see the bottom of the wings there, they don't, they don't fit in properly and I tried and tried to get them in but for some reason it wouldn't fit nicely. Um, this is a photo which part, I think it's a pedal, oh sorry not a pedal, like a little step that they, the pilot will step on to get up into the plane. Canopy glass on this went on really nice as well. I used the Tamiya extra thin cement, um, just dab it in the bottom of the glass, and that it so, tends to spread itself around. Holds it there. It's much better doing that than trying to get that contactor glue or any thicker glue. You just get the extra thin, dab it at the bottom of the glass where it meets, and that will spread itself around. Hold the glass on. This is the masking, masking up the canopy. Which I've not really used before, I've not really used a lot of uh, canopy masking, so I was quite happy with that. Just going over all the uh, panel lining with a black, flat black, just to give it a bit more depth and make it stand out a bit more, the panel lines. Looks a bit of a mess, but came out okay in the end. didn't um, mask up that gear bay which I should have done. So this is Tamiya's sky colour. Um, the model wanted sky so but it was hobby boss I think so they are slightly different colours. This is a bit more of a greenier colour and I think it wanted a bit more of a white whiter colour. But I was happy with this in the end. Um, this is where you can see my, my airbrush isn't working very well, it's splattering. Uh, the rest of that footage was a bit naff, so I didn't put it on there. Um, this was blue going on the top. It's the dark blue, a Tamiya dark blue. So this bit, um, I forgot to put the masking tape. There's two black stripes that go up the side, so I'm just spraying the black, and then I end up putting the masking tape on. That's supplied with uh, the kit as well, the little masking tape. I'm just going over the propellers as well, while I've got it there. You 
can see on the instructions there are the two black stripes at the sides. So I've put the stripes on. This is mask gold. It's really good stuff. It's like, it reminds me of school for some reason. The smell of it. It's like weird smell, but um, it's nice to paint on just to pick out the detail. Uh, sorry, pick out the camouflage. <laughs> Makes it a lot easier to spray, and it just peels off afterwards. It's really good stuff. By Humbro, this one mask gold, but I, I know you can get it on lots of different brands really does make the camouflage a lot easier but it does smell weird mine's a bit dry as well so that's why I'm having a bit of trouble with it and it dries really quick on your brush so you've got to be a bit quick with it Now I'm going over it with dark green. Um, again, this is all equivalent. Um, it wants Hobby Boss colours, but this is all Tamiya colours that I'm using. So this is RAF green I'm spraying on here. Again, you can see my airbrush playing up, it's bubbling at the top. Um, it was blocked, I think, so. so I've peeled off all the mask gold and we're just going with the decals now. I know not the best way of putting decals on like this, but some reason it got stuck in my pot and I couldn't get it out properly. But these decals are quite thick so they felt uh, quite tough so they weren't going to rip or anything. So you can see why I put the black lines on that they shine, you know, they come through the paint a bit so it gives it a bit more detail and a bit more depth. Um, once I put these on, I'm using a bit of um, decal fix, which is from Humbro as well, and it helps dry the decals. In, well, in my opinion, it helps dry the decals into the panel lines. But it looks like more like they've been painted on, apart from stickers that have just been stuck on. There's some ridges that went down the edge of the plane here, which kept stopping me being able to move the, de uh, the decals easily. But they went on in the end. So I did put a few of the smaller decals on around the wings and all that, but I mean, I, I ended up putting about 20 on. I didn't really put it on here because it's not exciting stuff watching that. But if anyone has the patience, I think there was over a hundred of them or something like that. But, and a lot of them didn't want to come off the page. A lot of them didn't want to stick. It, they're just impossible. So I ended up not putting them on. You can see I've done a few of them on the top of the plane. I'm just putting panel liner in now. Um, just dabbing it in so it runs in all the lines. Which it went on quite nice. I have given it a spray of um, some matte varnish as well. Just so the panel line don't stick to the paint and you can't get it off. So I'll go around the whole plane doing this, just dabbing it into the lines. Finally, a bit of weathering. I didn't want to put too much weathering on this because normally I put far too much on. So I just use a bit of smoke or sorry, um, soot 
<coughs> just went over the guns. And the guns have been firing and stuff like that, and a bit on the exhaust, and that's about it, really. As you can see, the panel lines come out quite nice, I think. And there we go. That is the end of that one. So, thanks for watching. Um, welcome to all the new subscribers, and I will see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye.